This is one of those days where you get to hear me just be genuinely happy about something. So it's been rumored for a bit now that Platinum Games was going to be kickstarting a remaster of The Wonderful 101, the cult classic from the Wii U era. And not only that, but word was they were going to be making it available for more platforms. And earlier today it launched and instantly garnered insane support and success. There were actually a lot of people who thought this may not do so well. It didn't get much attention when it did originally release. Granted, yeah, it was on the Wii U, but even for Wii U games, it didn't do very well. But as of the time of this recording, the Kickstarter's only been live for a few hours now. It now sits at well over $600,000 raised from over 9,000 backers. I love this whole thing for so many reasons, I, I don't even know where to start. One, the fact that it is a remaster. One of my main hesitations with crowdfunding games is that you're often buying an idea like, oh, this game is going to be the spiritual Mega Man successor that you've always dreamed of, and then it comes out and it sucks. In this case, we already know what the game is. If you don't, it's an action game with a unique twist. You play as the Wonderful 100, a group of superheroes essentially, and when I say you play as this group of superheroes, you play as all of them at once and work together to take down these giant foes. Yeah, you're controlling a giant squad of characters in real time at once, and they can unite and form different weapons like a fist, sword, whip, etc. So you're trying to manage your squad and form the proper weapons for the right situation. There really aren't any other games that play like this, which is why I liked it so much when it came out, but also I understand that's a big part of why it was a turnoff, a hard sell for a lot of other people. But yeah, with it being already released, you can look up gameplay videos, reviews, hell, full walkthroughs of the game if you want to, right now, before you buy. What we're paying for is a port on current platforms with added content. So it's not nearly the level of risk as backing a game that's still to be made from the ground up. Also, as they state in the description, this allows them the freedom to self-publish the game, and that's why it'll be on other platforms. It started with just the Switch, but Steam and PS4 were the initial stretch goals which were quickly shattered. This gives Platinum more control over the production and the ability to make it available to more people. Again, it's probably not something they absolutely couldn't do without Kickstarter. You know, Platinum isn't a small developer, they're certainly not a huge one either. They probably have the resources to do this themselves though, but doing the Kickstarter makes it much safer as you're getting all this capital up front, as well as again, it's a gauge. The game will definitely get a wider release, you know, being available on like your standard Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop, etc., all those places, and when it does become available to a wider market, it'll certainly sell more copies, but this sort of shows you how much potential there is. I also want to mention here a Kickstarter in general can just help you build hype in a bunch of ways, one of which I've seen a lot of people talking about, the initial funding goal. I've seen a bunch of people being like, what, they didn't have $50,000? Yes, they probably have $50,000, but to make this port, to make this port and have it be profitable, I'm certain it costs way more than that. Again, think of it just like with Wii U games in general. If it costs $50,000 to port a Wii U game over and then after that it's profitable, wouldn't pretty much every Wii U game from every developer have been ported over by now? Like, how many games couldn't make over 50 grand? No, I'm sure they hoped, even expected, it would get much farther than that, but having it be something like 50 grand gets you all the articles, as we saw as soon as this thing went live, like, oh, Wonderful 101 smashes funding goal in 30 minutes. Later we'll get ones that say, Wonderful 101 is a thousand percent funded. Some of these decisions are made specifically to build hype. And of course, as a big physical game collector, all the stupid, overpriced, unnecessary rewards that come along with most crowdfunding campaigns, I love them, can't get enough. They've got it all here, keychains, shirts, vinyl soundtracks, uh, figures, all sorts of tiers to get in on. Now, what most people will be interested in is just getting the game. All the pricing is in yen, but it kind of shows you about what you're looking at. So about 36 bucks will get you a digital copy and $41 plus shipping will get you a physical copy. Good prices, in my opinion. I totally expected at least those physical versions for this Kickstarter thing to be the full $60. So I was actually kind of surprised that it was 40. And collectors should note that Kickstarter backers will get an exclusive cover art 
for that physical version. But yeah, they've got tiers that go all the way up to about like $5,000 if you want all the things. The most treasured reward here, though, is certainly the Get Blocked by Kamiya reward, which I think you start getting at the $100 tier. If you're familiar with the game's director, you'll know he's famous for blocking people on Twitter. And so here he's kind of, I guess, embraced the meme, as the kids say. And if you back at this tier or a higher one, he will send a tweet directed to you, surely not a friendly one, and then block you on Twitter. Of course, it's all optional. Definitely got a kick out of that. Yeah, I think this is a great idea, a perfect game to have this type of approach with. Again, it's success was definitely not a sure thing. Of course, I love the original. In fact, my review for it was one of my earliest YouTube videos. So if you feel like a trip in the Wayback Machine and want to hear my original full thoughts on the wonderful 101 for Wii U, be sure to check out that video. Again, while its fate wasn't certain, I don't know if anyone also expected it to do this well out of the gate. And I hope it kind of serves as a lesson that it's a takeaway for other developers who may be similarly considering porting their games over to other platforms. Like I said, I love the way this is being handled and could see it being replicated. Like, with the Switch specifically, we historically have these issues with, like, third-party developers deciding whether or not they should port their games over. There's this question as to if there will be enough support to make a Switch version worth it. Well, if you're on the fence, why not test the waters with a Kickstarter? Even something like deciding whether or not to localize a game that's, you know, maybe only planned for a Japanese release. We get that a lot too, where people clamor for a game to get a localization, a Western release, translated into English. But it's hard to tell how much of that chatter will translate into actual sales. For instance, say for a game to be profitable enough to warrant a Switch port, it needs to sell 100,000 copies on the system. Now, you're probably not going to receive 100,000 backers on Kickstarter, or anything like that, but crowdfunding can more so be used as a tool to tell how many you could potentially sell, as well as get a good chunk of those buyers. Of course, if a game is made available first on a crowdfunding platform early on, but then is made available for your standard retailers, again, like I said, your Amazon, GameStop, Best Buy, etc., as you get closer to release, you're going to sell way more copies, but you can use that initial Kickstarter to find out if the audience is in fact there. Again, yeah, I would just, I'd love to see this done more for games again where publishers are on the fence about where to release their games. I think going off of how this wonderful 101 Kickstarter has gone so far, it's going to have a fantastic second life. And like I also said, as the backers, we're backing something that we already know a good amount about. Now, could these versions end up poorly optimized or something like that? Sure. But the level of risk is way, way, way less than buying into a bunch of grand promises, perhaps before you've even seen any gameplay. Anyway, with that, this video's a wrap. Love this wonderful 101 Kickstarter. Hope it inspires more people to do the same. And I can't wait to see how far supporters push this thing. Let me know your thoughts on the Kickstarter in the comments. Did you back the Kickstarter? And did you play the original release of Wonderful 101 on the Wii U? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the Wonderful 101 Kickstarter. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari, and join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.